what kind of a world would this be if we weren't able to raise strong human beings? whether they're males or females, women, men, whatever ways you decide on them, and you look at another person, but if you, we don't allow that other person to become the best that they can and to grow as much as they can, we all do a disservice to each other. There's wisdom going on around us all the time. If we choose to look at it that way, if we choose to learn from it and become better, a better version of ourselves, a better version of what we'd like to see in this world. And this show is dedicated to 92 years of wisdom that I had the privilege of being a part of, observing, and really becoming a student of life. Uh, this is dedicated to my wonderful dad who didn't have a ton of education, formal education per se. He might have had a fifth grade or sixth grade education at the most, yet he had PhDs, PhDs in kindness, a PhD in respect, PhD in love and a PhD in compassion in how to be uh, great at treating others and also treating yourself. So in this show, really, I'd like to concentrate on what are the things that we can learn from 92 years of his wisdom. And you will see a part of the show is some of our actual footage of our family, some of the photos, some of the little bits and pieces of events that made life really joyful because of the way that my dad showed up, the way that my dad really presented himself and was and is. So I'm going to start off with the first thing is, uh, gosh, there's so much to share, but I think the biggest thing to start with is to know how to be joyful, to know how to be light, and meaning that it doesn't have to be that everything is going exceptionally well in your life, but really you have a smile on your face, a genuine smile, because you know that you're not attached to it all. Knowing that you can make an impact in how you live your life that is all your choice. And my dad showed us that if you pay attention to some of the photos, if you're simply listening, you may not be getting the chance to see the photos. But if you're watching it on YouTube, yes, you will get to see some of the photos and some of the pieces. But the biggest thing is I never paid attention to a time when my dad was mean or hurtful. He was always living in a way that showed up very calm, always looking for a solution. As a matter of fact, he and my mom boasted on the fact that after 60 some odd years of marriage, they never had arguments. They never went to a length where they would speak to each other in a way that would be hurtful or harmful. And they intentionally did that throughout their life. Does it mean that there weren't times that there were things that were definitely very challenging in life? Of course there are. But they made it a, a very mindful way of showing up for each other and speaking with that kindness. And I had a chance to ask him in the latter years of his life, in all the travels you've done, Dad, in all the countries you've lived in and you've visited and you've invested time and energy in, what was the most important things that you observed in those countries? What did you gain? And his answer was, everything was about the people. What made countries, what made communities, what made any travel so much better was the people. 
that's everything that mattered in his life is how people treated each other, how he showed up, how uh, important it was to show up and be a part of wherever you lived, to bring the complete you to wherever you are. He worked in Qatar, Qatar a long time ago when he was in his younger days. As a matter of fact, my brother was born there. And he got to work with the royal family at that point and was treated as part of that family, was given so much respect, was given so much leeway because of how he showed up in those areas. He didn't come in as a stranger. He always came in as a part of that land, a part of that family. So wherever he went, he made sure that he was a part of that area. And the people is what made the difference. That's how he earned the respect that he earned, is by showing up completely as you are and treating the other human being with respect. And I guess that is the second point that I really learn so much from it. Be respectful of your home. And home doesn't mean the residence that you live in. It's the place that you happen to be at. And to him, home was wherever that is, whether he was in Qatar, whether he was in the United States, whether he was back in Lebanon, no matter where he was, that was the home. And it made such a difference in treating that area, not only the people, but the land in a way that you're taking care of it, that is your home. And that is one of the things that I really picked up from him is this is our home. Planet Earth is our home. And how we treat it and how well we take care of it, not only for us, but for the people around us and for the next generation that's going to come is so crucial. He invested a lot of his time and energy in his latter years farming, build, uh, building crops, uh, planting trees. And they weren't trees for him. They were trees for him to give away to others because that was a way of treating the land and treating others in a way that is beneficial, that is going to give them ways to continue to foster uh, good energy, to continue to foster good food, because most of the trees that he did plant were either fruit trees of some kind that produced something. That was his idea, is that you can feed the next generation by planting for the next part. And I wrote notes because there are so many things about my dad that I could talk about. But what we're taking from this is the things that we pick up from the wisdom of it. another human being that has gone through this earth for so many years and left behind such a good imprint for others to go by. As a matter of fact, uh, we ended up having three services for him celebrations of life, one here and two back in Lebanon where he was born. And there were people that showed up to honor this human being that were his friends when he was in his early 20s. And they spoke of how good of a human being he was even back then. He knew that treating each other well is the most important part. And as a matter of fact, one of my biggest lessons from him is there is never a need for violence or for speaking in a mannerism that is hurtful to someone else. I've never heard him speak in those ways. His way was always, there's always ways to resolve. It. There's always ways that we can talk to each other, hear each other, learn from each other, even when things are tense. If you take the time to actually listen and learn from someone else and really understand where they're coming from, there's always ways to resolve things. So his theories of war is wars never need to exist. If we as human beings took our intellect and took our 
wisdom and really use them in a way to understand each other, we wouldn't end up in the situations that we see in various parts of our world now and in all the centuries that have gone by. So there is never a need for those things. And it takes effort. It takes effort to sit there and listen. It takes effort to really be compassionate towards somebody else and really hear them out. So that perspective goes through how I live and how a lot of my families get to hear each other. Even when we don't agree on something, it's always to a level that we still are respectful of each other. And one of the most wonderful things I observed is the humility in the things that at one point didn't go right in his life. And if someone brought up those things to him, the way he would respond is, yes, that is true. I used to think that at one point. I used to do those things at some point. And I'm not that anymore. And I've learned. And he never justified whatever it is that someone might be speaking of. Some of the things that we have gone through in our lives that were very tough, very devastating, and the way that we showed up maybe, his reaction was, that's true. At that point, that's what I knew. At that point, that's how I spoke. At that point, that's how I reacted. But I've learned through the years to be different, to be more educated in the way to show up, the way to be. And he never, ever justified the reasons of why he did something. And that takes a lot of humility. It takes away putting your ego aside to be able to say at one point, yes, I might have done things that weren't the best or didn't appear like the best, but I'm no longer that. And the beautiful thing is, he never attached himself to anything that he did or he learned. Those were things that he grew through. And that's a wonderful lesson for all of us, is all of us are growing. All of us are learning. And the more that we can pay attention and let go of things that no longer serve us being that human being, and become a lot more attached, actually, excuse me, detached to anything that is going on because we're all learning. All we're doing is we're growing. And the more we can become a lot more kind to each other, a lot more respectful, that's how we continue to be better stewards of ourselves and of the way that we show up and the way we treat our home. I've been so privileged to go through this lifetime with my dad and see how well he has learned from everything that he's done. He's earned the respect of so many individuals. He was an avid learner of all kinds of things that it astonished me of all the things that he did know because he always prided himself in asking questions and really showing up and learning and hearing. It doesn't mean that my dad was ever a perfect or a complete human being. And I'm not portraying that to anybody because that's what makes us human beings. But he took the time and the effort to grow and learn through it all. There was a time when we were younger where he was very strict strict in the way that he expected us to be. But that's because we grew up in a region and in an area where protecting women was a big deal, where women were not at that point thought of as strong or being capable of taking care of themselves. 
But luckily, we did move from one country to another. And we did learn. And he became so much different as the years gone by to understand that women and men are very capable of doing anything that they need to do. They're capable of learning anything that they would like to learn. And a lot of those ideas that were planted in our heads are no longer around. And that ability to see that, to go, oh, where did I learn that? Where did I pick that up? That was such a beautiful thing to be able to identify that a lot of the things that we believe, we picked it up somewhere. We learned it somewhere. So it was beautiful to see through my dad's eyes and through his life how much he was for females, for women becoming strong, for us to show up as complete. Because what kind of a world would this be if we weren't able to raise strong human beings? whether they're males or females, women, men, whatever ways you decide on them, and you look at another person, but if you we don't allow that other person to become the best that they can and to grow as much as they can, we all do a disservice to each other. And those are beautiful things to have learned and noticed through my dad's eyes through that humility of becoming okay with all the things that at one point you might have gone, I totally believe that, and years later go, I no longer believe the thing that I thought at that point. I now know things that allow me to see things differently, allow me to show up differently. A very specific lesson that my dad said to me, in some of our talks towards the end of his life where he was going through dementia, but there were times that he would show up like sharp. And he turned around one day to me and said, insane, who insane? A person is a person. Or a human being is a human being. And he meant it so much to let me know that treat people like a person, treat every person like a person and understand where they're coming from at that moment. Allow them to grow, allow them to become. And another thing that he said, and I believe that was almost one of the last things in his life that he really desired to emphasize to me. Mafi shi peldini bihru. There is nothing in this world that is so worthwhile. And he's talking about there is no thing in this world that is worthwhile. What is always worthwhile is how we treat people, how we treat each other. He really emphasized that lesson you could see it in his eyes. You could see it in his demeanor when he turned around and really looked at me to get my full attention. Those two things. Insane who insane. Person is a person. There is no thing, nothing in this world that is worthwhile except us human beings and how we treat each other, how we treat every living thing on this planet and how we treat our home, our planet Earth. So I hope you've enjoyed a lot of these simple lessons that are not so simple, that make us a better version of humanity. I appreciate you listening and I'll see you on the next podcast. And to my dad, Thank you for being the beautiful human being you always were. And thank you for leaving a beautiful imprint for me and for the rest of the world.